Welcome to Wasm Cloud Wednesday for March the 30th, 2022. We've got a special demo today uh, with uh, Ninjas. Uh, you want to get us kicked off? Yeah, thank you. So last week uh, I showed just a still image of, of Ninjas, but uh, now I was going to try to do a live demo here. So I'll, I'll kick it off and uh, let's see, here we go. Uh, so, yeah, um, I mentioned, well, last week, the, the parts included in this demo. So the parts that are running in uh, uh, using WASM is uh, the pool simulation written in, in C++ uh, and also the Lawrence uh, attractor simulation here hovering over the the pool uh, and then we have a lot of other things going on at the same times of course uh, very obvious that the ninjas uh, they're uh, taken from uh, mixamo uh, and the animations of of the mannequins as well uh, then in the here in the background you have a spectrum analyzer of the the audio being played. Uh, and that is run using uh, the web audio API in the browser. Uh, and then uh, the 3D rendering itself is done with uh, WebGL. Uh, and uh, then also you have the possibility if you have uh, VR equipment to go into VR mode to get an, uh, an immersive experience of this. So, uh, well, I, I have, I have the, the sound, it's really loud in my, my earphone. So I'll just uh, turn the, the ninjas off for a minute. And uh, well, if you have some, some particular questions about the demo, so just please go ahead and ask. Um, I think it would be great to hear. Um, I know the you shared that the uh, like the waves uh, were written in C plus plus and things like that. Yeah. You know, which parts are um, uh, you know what was it like uh, you know getting it all ported via WebAssembly and um, you know, getting it all running? Uh, so the the Lawrence tractor is written Rust and and of course since uh, Rust has really made a point of being a I mean, WebAssembly friendly language, that was really a breeze. And uh, I mean, when you uh, compile with, uh, I, I, I think it's Wasmpack, right? Um, that's really a, a great experience. I mean, you, you get the, the TypeScript interfaces generated for you and you don't have to do any sort of type conversion yourself. Uh, and regarding C++, uh, that's a little bit bumpier. Um, for that, you're, you're using uh, mscript uh, and uh, well, you, you got a um, bunch of canned JavaScript being generated and, and it's really not that friendly, but um, it works. It's, uh, it's okay. And, and you have some, uh, macros and I mean some help uh, generating the the translation between JavaScript and and C++ or WASM. Uh, that is phenomenal and thank you again for uh, sharing that with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to a second uh, quick talk through um, about an update on the machine learning framework uh, for uh, WASM Cloud uh, that BMW, Intel, and our very own Steve have been working on. Steve, would it be, you guys, you guys want Steve the both ways? You can have him that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you just want to uh, write a my auto there, Steve? Would that work? And yeah. I'll, I'll share the screen for you. Yeah, share your screen. Or, no, I, um... Hi, um, so um, Christoph Brewing uh, submitted an update to the ML inference capability provider and um, previously, it had a couple of really simple models. It just did an identity transformation and then a n plus three transformation. 
um, just really to demonstrate that you could do an API and invoke a predict function on the provider. Um, but there are a couple of updates that have uh, been, been uh, submitted in the last uh, week and a half. Um, one of them is to add a image processing stage. So um, the, the predict function just takes a tensor, which is a, a multi-dimensional array. And it could apply to any kind of uh, machine learning model. Um, <clears throat> uh, one thing Christoph did is he added TensorFlow support. So it now supports TensorFlow and Onyx. Um, there's a, another popular framework, OpenVINO, that uh, will be added later. Um, and um, in addition, there's, some, there's quite a few image processing models, uh, including MobileNet, and uh, so for the image pre-processing step, it takes an image and transforms it into that tensor, tensor to, uh, to hand to the pre-processing step. That's done by a Wasm Cloud actor. Um, another thing that was done is we updated the interface for um, the inference engine, that predict API and how we express tensors. Um, and some of that is based on some uh, work we did with the with the WASI NN team to up, update the the way that we format the um, the arrays and uh, adding a little bit of metadata so that the sender and receiver can agree on the format of the data. So um, that's in um, uh, Christoph's uh, um, repository uh, that, that Liam yeah. is sharing there. And um, I encourage you to play with it and uh, Send, send us some feedback and um, let us know what you think. Yeah, it's linked in the machine learning channel um, if you're on our Slack, uh, and it's also linked in a general I cross posted there. Steve, tell me a little more. I think that there was a great discussion around uh, the idea of having the preprocessor actors um, and what are the pros and cons of that. You know, um, uh, all of these machine learning algorithms that chip can need this preprocessing step to prepare the data. So what was it about the kind of like, um, you know, the scalability or what were the sort of design considerations that led you guys just to do that in Wasm Cloud? Uh, well, sure. Uh, so for, for Wasm Cloud, one of, the, one of the features we really like is the ability to um, find a provider that has the capabilities you need, um, <clears throat> the uh, use case that we're thinking of, one of the use cases we're thinking of is that you, you might want to have the data processed locally, maybe on the device where say you've captured an image or maybe on a LAN, on your home LAN. And a reason for doing that is to maintain privacy. Uh, so you don't have to send your pictures to the cloud. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of applications where um, the, we don't really need to have the data um, the pixel data on, on the cloud. We just need to know the results. Like you took a picture of X or we recognized your face and so on. Um, and so, so um, uh, Wasm Cloud can also optionally select, say a, um, a server that's running, um, a cloud server that's running um, a high performance CPU or, or a bank of GPUs. And if maybe if there's not a local provider, then it can, it can go over to the net, um, to the cloud hosted capability provider. And that's done through the magic of NATS, um, where with a NATS uh, leaf node, uh, it will always prefer dispatching messages to uh, something that's on the local network or connected to that leaf node. And so that allows you to, to create that kind of architecture. Um, another Another reason we like the actor model is that um, these, different, these different machine learning models uh, all require data in a different format. So for images, some expect an RGB format, some expect a BGR format, some expect the color data to be uh, the, uh, color space from a number from zero to one, some expect it to be in a range minus one to plus one. And that can vary depending on whether you're using MobileNet or ImageNet or the different uh, image processing models. So um, what, we, what we wanna be able to do dynamically is uh, send it to a preprocessor that's connected to that model, maybe through a nickname 
um, and then be able to, at runtime, dynamically switch between models. Uh, so that'll let us do, say, A-B testing if, if we want to. Um, we have a model we like, but uh, maybe the uh, machine learning uh, team has come up with another one they think is better, then we could direct 5% of the traffic to the new one um, and then test the relative performance of those two processing models. And if we like it, then we can increase performance. So it's sort of classic A-B testing. Um, there are other names for it in, in machine learning uh, community, but um, it's a pretty common use case. And so um, being able to do that switching is uh, is really attractive, and there's ways we can do that with an actor um, and change that at runtime. So, what do you think are the next steps um, uh, on the sort of like initiative? Um, is it continued curation of like a more turnkey demo, or um, what are you thinking um, uh, the direction they should head in? Uh, um, well, that's that's a great question. Um, and, and part of that is uh, because this is an open source project and we want to get uh, people to participate and use it. Um, so part of that decision about uh, what's next on the roadmap will depend on the feedback we get. Um, some of the things we want to do is, is really uh, is build out some realistic demos that use these pipelines so that we know we're not just developing an abstract API for the sake of an API, but that we know it's an API that works for some real world applications. Uh, so we'll be building some of those. Um, there's a few kinds of uh, problem domains that are interesting. Um, anomaly detection is one, image recognition is another. Um, and then um, also testing, testing some of the WASM cloud uh, failover capabilities. Um, there's a little bit of work to be done on the interfaces uh, to make the messaging be a little more efficient. Um, so all, all of those things are on the roadmap. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate it. Are there any questions for Steve um, across the community or uh, anybody have any uh, thoughts they want to share? Okay. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and move on to the next announcements. Thank you so much for the update, Steve. Uh, the invites and schedule for uh, WASM Day uh, EU in Valencia, Spain uh, have been um, announced. I'll drop a link in channel. Um, uh, it's going to be a phenomenal day of content. We're going to start with a, um, a keynote uh, from uh, Bailey Hayes, who um, is uh, sometimes on this meeting a phenomenally uh, a charismatic and interesting speaker from Single Store. Um, she's working a little bit on the machine learning stuff here and some of the um, single store uh, drivers for uh, Wasm Cloud. Um, then we've got a talk from Steve Sanderson about uh, bringing Wasm to .NET mainstream. Um, in his submission, he did mention uh, Wasm Cloud. Uh, we've got uh, a, an overview from Divya about the binary magic of Wasm. Uh, the second state folks, uh, Michael, a frequent uh, contributor and speaker, talking about um, JavaScript, Python, and Ruby in WebAssembly. Um, a presentation from uh, Jeff, your colleague, um, over at uh, Shopify. Uh, then, then a lightning talk um, about a Wasm Cloud and Bevy ECS. And um, this is one I'm super interested in. Alan's been building you know, games and uh, gaming platforms uh, for a while now using Wasm Cloud. Uh, and I'm, I'm really curious to uh, hear his uh, presentation and dive in a bit further. Um, uh, then we've got uh, Flavio and Raphael talking about Kube Warden um, off the Suzy team, uh, some of the admission controllers for Kubernetes, um, an update on WASI from Nathaniel uh, and Harold, and then another lightning talk around um, uh, Ron Evans, um, who is the sort of big facilitator of the Tiny Go community. If you've ever been on the Tiny Go Slack, He's um, uh, uh, probably the gentleman that uh, helped you out. A lightning talk about Whammer, uh, which I'm looking forward to, WebAssembly on small devices. Um, and then uh, the Infineon folks are working on a really great use case for WebAssembly. They've integrated WebAssembly into their streaming platform. So think if Kafka had the ability to do inline transforms on data and things like that. Uh, great use case. And then uh, Colin Murphy from Adobe uh, will be talking about um, uh, some of the things that Adobe is doing on WebAssembly. I'm excited about this one. Um, they uh, plan to talk a little bit about what they've been doing with Wasm Cloud um, as well. And then uh, Matt Butcher, Radu, 
uh, and Radu are going to talk about uh, building a CMS. Um, so I hope that um, I can meet many of you there or see many of you there uh, this year. And if you can't, um, all online tickets to KubeCon this year include full access to all of the days. So there's no more day only tickets and you'll have the ability to sort of stream all of the WASM day programming live if you can't make it. If you can, uh, let us know. Um, a couple of us will be over there um, uh, this year and we'll let you know uh, some more about what we plan to do as a team on site. Uh, open call uh, to the community. Are there any topics to discuss today? Anything, anybody have anything that they would like to share um, across, um, across or any community events? Uh, Brooks, any community call outs today? Don't have any community call outs. Okay. We're all heads down this week on planning at our offsite in Utah. So we've, uh, we've kind of got our hands full uh, this week. Uh, but uh, I guess open floor, anyone else? If not, we'll be wrapping up early today. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. I'll go ahead and stop the recording and I hope everybody has a great week. As usual, we can hang out here. I can't see my stop recording button because there's something in the way. Uh, where the heck is it? Oh, great. All right, everybody have a great week.